Today we have a special treat. We have a COVID bullshit fatigue rant. Take it away, Dr. Awesome. It's not going to be a rant so much. Oh, yes, it is. Well, it's going to be a little bit of a rant, but then we're (laughs) going to also talk about COVID fatigue and everything that's going on with this whole COVID situation in Ontario, uh, specifically uh, Toronto, where we are in in the GTA. And, you know, watching the news yesterday, I, I heard a lot of stupid shit and it just makes no sense to me. And we have to think about this. This was all done in the same breath. Right now, we're situated in the greater Toronto area. And our numbers right now, when we went into lockdown back in March, I think our numbers were in the 400 a day range in Ontario, in the whole entire province. Now, uh, the province of Ontario has 14 million people in it. And we were at 400 a day across Ontario and we shut everything down. Today, our numbers are at 1500 a day and everything is open. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of arguments about this saying, you know what? We need to get out there. We need to open stuff up. We need to have the schools open. We need all of this to happen. Uh, we need people to build an immunity to this virus, but people are dying and people are getting very sick. A lot of people are wearing their masks. A lot of people are doing the proper thing, but our numbers keep going up and there's a reason for that. And that's because of the stupidity of people. We'll get into that a little bit later on in this episode, but watching the news yesterday was just really, again, we've done an episode on scratching our heads at certain things that are being done in this world and the stupidity that happens. And here we are again, talking about the same shit because of the stupidity of our leaders in this province. You turn the news on yesterday and the premier of our province says, we are staring down the barrel of another lockdown because our numbers are extremely, extremely concerning. In the same breath, they say the schools will remain open. And yet in the same breath again, They turn around and say the highest transfer rate right now in this province is between the ages of 14 and 17. And that is at 7%. The transfer rate is at 7% between the ages of 14 and 17. Now, how can you say all of that shit in one breath? We're staring down the barrel of another lockdown. Although the lockdown might happen, the schools will remain open. And if the schools remain open, the transfer rate between all of these people is between 14 and 17 years old is the highest transfer rate among any age group in this province. Those are high school students. So how can you say all of that in the same breath and make any sense whatsoever to what the situation is going on? There's one of two reasons they're doing this. Either they are highly, highly, highly misinformed or they just don't give a shit. I had this conversation with my wife the other night and I turned to her and I said, they don't care about people's health. They care more about money and the economy. And yes, don't get me wrong. The economy is extremely important. The economy does keep uh, everything running. We need the money. We need the, um, the sales going on in in our, in our province, in our city, and all around the world for that matter. However, at what point do you risk people's health for it? You know, we had a death in our school board uh, from COVID-19. And, you know, the feeling that I get from the province is that they don't really give a shit that this happened in the schools. And yes, this has happened outside of the school board uh, in other places. People have died in other workplaces, from other workplaces, uh, in long-term care facilities and everywhere. But in the school board, they're going to say she had the option to opt out and not come to work. And she knew what her underlying health conditions were. Granted, she knew that. But then you have to look at the big picture. If she were to actually opt out of coming to work, 
would she be able to afford her rent because she wouldn't be getting paid to do this? And I understand I'm using it as an example because this is the, uh, the field that we work in. I'm using the school board as an example. I don't work in other places. I don't know what the rules are in other places. I don't know if you would get paid or if you have to go on the uh, Canadian uh, relief funds or whatever it is. I, I have no idea. So I'm using the school board as an example. And it makes me angry that people up top that are in charge can actually sit there and say this shit in the same breath and say that it, we're, we're looking down this barrel of another lockdown. We're so concerned about this and we care about the health and safety of er every Ontarian in this province. We care about the health and safety. You do not. You do not give two shits about what is going on with this virus. In the same breath again, they say, the doctors say, that we could hit 6,500 cases a day by mid-December. Right now, when we're doing this recording, we are almost at the end of November. So we're talking about three weeks away from now. They're, they're planning for 6,500 cases a day in the worst case scenario. Yet, from the minister, uh, sorry, from the uh, premier's mouth, the same breath, they said, we'll be in the green zone by the end of December. How is that possible? Unless this is a hoax, which I don't believe, but unless this is a hoax or they're using this for something else, there's no way that they can go from 6,500 cases a day to going back into the green zone, which is between zero and 50 cases a day in a two week span. There's no possible way for that to happen. What are your takes on this? Mine's going to be short and to the point. Let's see, Justin Trudeau, New World Order, the elites are not wearing their masks. They're being caught in uh, social gatherings. They don't give two shits, but they're telling everybody else, oh, you got to wear your mask. Otherwise, you're a racist. Watch your privilege. Meanwhile, time after time after time after time after time, these elite fools, these leaders, so-called leaders, are being caught in their social gatherings, 10, 15, 20 people, no masks. And then they're pointing at us poor slobs at the bottom saying, wear your mask. So my personal take on this is this is a virus, but they're using this to usher in their great reset. Here we have a tyrannical government that's gone completely off the rails. They're completely insane up here. There's no accountability. There's all sorts of craziness going on in the government. And basically the people at the bottom, the small business owners, the middle class, were being wiped out. Everybody's being crushed. If you don't have a government job these days, you're screwed. And this is their plan. But yeah, it's pretty stupid. Seriously. Oh, and just so everybody knows, we work at a school where there's already been cases. We work with a student who's been like coughing, sneezing in our faces, doesn't keep his mask on. And there's already been instances where we've heard of infections. And by association, you know, some of our students have had to stay away. And we work with these students so why are we still here? We were told, you know, just keep going. So either it is or it isn't. If it is, shut everything down. Or if it isn't, if this is just a big hack to reset society and enslave everybody, let's go. Let's get it on, man. Enough with the bullshit because I'm also sick and tired to see poor people suffering and also the ones that are healthy suffering as well because of these inept and corrupt politicians, liars, these New World Order fools. Please, we see you punks. That's our particular little shithole here in Canada and especially well, in well, Toronto as well. Well, see, what bothers me is this, is when we first came back to work in September, and don't get me wrong, I want to be here. I want to be at work. I want everything to go back to normal. Apparently, this is our new normal, wearing the mask, it's fine. But when we first came back to work and we did the health and safety training for COVID, we were told that an outbreak was two or more cases in a school. And the other day, we had 13 cases in one day in one school. And that school remained open from 13 cases. I don't understand how you keep a school open. Now, they're saying that this is Toronto Public Health's recommendation. It's not the province. I think that's all bullshit. I think that the rules and the guidelines that they're putting out I don't think that they're protecting people enough. I don't think they're taking the proper precautions or the proper steps in order to curb this virus. It's getting out of hand. 
and people just don't give a shit anymore because they've been lied to. So when you go out into public, people aren't caring anymore. And this is what carries into the COVID fatigue situation is we've been locked down since basically March. And we were locked down, what, all the way up until basically September when they started to loosen things and they opened up the schools and everything was back to regular scheduled programming, I guess you can call it. Uh, stores were open. Everything reopened up. Now, we reopened up and, and, and the numbers started to shoot through the roof. And it's because people got tired of being told to stay home, not do anything, uh, you could only go on grocery shopping and that's about it or to the doctors if you had to for pick up your prescriptions and people got really really tired of it and we're no different i'm i'm tired of having to stay home but at the end of the day you know what i think we have to do what we're supposed to do otherwise this is never going to go away this is con- going to control us for the rest of our lives and we're and most of the population is going to live in fear of this virus we can't live in fear of it we can take extra precautions in order to not catch it, I guess, but we can't live in fear of this virus. And what they're telling us is two different stories of, yes, everything can be open, but you know what? We're going to keep certain things open. We're going to close certain things. We're going to add restrictions here, but not over here. You know, if you close down the restaurant scene in Toronto, what do you think is going to happen? You think those Toronto people are just going to stay away from restaurants? They are going to herd over to the next municipality that is open and they're going to go to the restaurants that are open there and they're going to transfer the virus. We had a premier from New Brunswick, I believe, yesterday say to Trudeau, to Justin Trudeau, our prime minister, that they need to stop the interprovince travel because people from Ontario or people from Quebec are traveling over into different provinces and bringing the virus over there. And their numbers are starting to go up because people are traveling outside of their province. And I I tend to agree with him because I don't know how you stop this virus from going if people keep traveling. You know, you have Kevin Hart was over in Yorkville the other day. And I said to my wife, I don't understand how this is even possible if the borders are closed. Well, that's because it makes money for him to be here and shooting a project or shooting a film. The film industry is still open. So the Americans that have the highest number of cases are allowed to come over here because they're paying to get the permits here and paying to be able to film here. And it's making money. But let's bring the Americans over here that are actually the highest number of cases in the world right now, the borders aren't closed for them because it makes money. But the borders are closed for everybody else. So why not just make it a free-for-all, open up the borders, open up the shopping, open up the schools, open up everything, and only the strong survive. Now, I'm saying this knowing that I have an immunocompromised issue and very potentially could get very ill or worse if I were to catch this. And I'm saying this because I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know if we need to believe that this virus is as serious as they're saying it was, and no disrespect to anybody who has lost a loved one out there or who has gone through this virus. My sympathies go out to you. Uh, I don't wish it upon anybody. However, I don't know what to believe anymore. From what they're telling us, it's a big, big problem, but then in the same breath, they're telling us that everything is okay, basically, and that, you know what, let's just reopen everything. We we had a our education minister, Mr. Lecce, who I just, I don't understand this guy at all, because the other day he was talking about extending the Christmas holiday break. Here in Canada, we get a two-week break at school to spend time with family over Christmas and New Year's. And we return after the new year back to work. And the the talk was going virtual for schools a week after. So it would extend to a three-week break instead. We would all be doing uh, virtual learning at home. Uh, The workers would be doing the virtual teaching at home. And I thought thought to myself, this is a fantastic idea because a lot of people are going to get together with family members during the holidays. 
this is going to be a super spreader when we return if we don't do it properly. And then yesterday they come back on the news and they say, absolutely not. We're not shutting down the schools. Two week break. That's it. You're going back to work right away. Now, is that caring about everybody's health and safety? It's not. It's not at all because now you're bringing in people who have gone and mixed with family or friends during the holidays. Don't forget, you have New Year's in there where a lot of people get together and this becomes a super spreader. What are they going to do? Are they going to panic at the end of the day when the numbers hit like enormous proportions? Are they going to panic then? Well, then it's too late then it's too late. You had the opportunity to stop this. The mishandling of what you have done with this virus is just mind boggling. You had the opportunity to stop this in its tracks, yet you failed and you dropped the ball miserably on this. You have created a giant mess in what is happening and now you're trying to clean it up and you're blaming the citizens of Ontario for the ball that you dropped. You cannot blame anybody except yourselves because you mishandled all of this. Okay, did you get that out of your system? Yeah. Okay. So this is a virus. Remember the origin, okay? Communist China, thank you very much, where they locked down all the flights from Wuhan to Beijing and the rest of China, but they allowed all the flights from Wuhan to the international community. Thank you, Communist Chinese Party. Thank you. Fail. So remember, all this shit lands in their lap, okay? First. That's first off. Second. You know what? Unfortunately, people have died, and uh, that's the sad reality of this whole thing. Thank you, Communist China. Not the poor Chinese people at the bottom who are getting crushed by their tyrannical government. This is solely in the lap of the Chinese Communist Party. So it's all on them, okay? All the deaths... Everything, it's all on them. With regards to what's going on here, let's just open everything up then. You can't do 20% over here, 10% over there, 40% over there, certain conditions for this one, some conditions for that one, those ones are okay, this one's not over. No, let's just get this over with once and for all. Open everything up, whoever survives wins. That's it, that's it. That's what it comes down to basically. Otherwise, we're gonna be living as slaves for the rest of our lives going forward. And that's my take on that. Again, thank you, Communist China. Anyways, so yeah, uh, unfortunately, that's where we are. And even we're shaking our heads since we work in the education field. It's like, okay, so if kids have to stay home that are infected or that have had contact with infected people, and then we have contact with those students, why don't we have to stay home? So it's different standards. What's good for me is not good for you. Well, who decides that? Again, these are the puppet masters behind the scenes, the people pulling the strings. And basically, that's all I got to say. So take it away. You know, I understand that people already dislike people that work in the education field because they think that we complain a lot, especially or, us, you know, we, we, yeah, <laughs> and we complain a lot or we're, you know, we get too many breaks or whatever it is. This isn't what this is about, about what us wanting to stay home. This is about being able to go home to our own families and make sure that we're safe and we don't transmit anything to our own families that may have dire consequences because of what is going on. Now, you sit here and listen to what Master Impressive just said. And, you know, like a a student has come in contact with somebody that tested positive and they're told to isolate for two weeks. Yet we who have had direct contact with that student don't have to isolate. Well, which one is it? Which one is it? Why do we not have to isolate? We do not want to stay home. Let me let me just, you know, reiterate that time and time again we do not want to stay home this is not about us wanting to take a break from work or be off of work and not do our job we love what we do we love coming in and we love working with our special needs students we love uh coming to work every day but at the end of the day once again what are the rules what are the rules here that we're supposed to follow If our student is staying home because they were in direct contact with them, we were in direct contact with that student. Why are we not staying home? 
So it makes no sense that the student has to stay home either. That student should be here with us working and doing his school stuff that he should be doing. And now he's at home and he's missing two weeks of school. So it makes no sense to us. So it's not about complaining about, oh, let us stay home for two weeks. We want to be off. We just, you know, we want to sit home, get paid for doing nothing. It's not about that. It's about health and safety and bringing this home to our families. Now, I want to get into a little bit about COVID fatigue and what everybody else is probably feeling around this world and how tired we are of just sitting at home and doing nothing. I, for one, myself, because I'm immunocompromised and have had some health issues, do not get to do anything anymore. Uh, before this all started, I was the one that handled the uh, grocery shopping. We went out quite a bit to like restaurants or we went out to, you know, uh, do some shopping for like different retail. We went out and did, you know, the movie theater or played, you know, mini golf or bowling or whatever it was. We would do fun activities and we're no longer allowed to do that because all of those are closed or because I'm immunocompromised, I will not go out to those. And it gets very, very boring. And I'm a homebody. I like to sit at home. I like to do stuff at home, like building, uh, cons- like not construction, but sorry, uh, projects at home. Uh, I like to work on the podcast. There's a lot of work going into the podcast as well. Um, so um, Pod Jerky is actually doing really, really well right now. Uh, we're very thankful to all of our new listeners, everyone that has tuned in. Uh, I don't want to get uh, jump the gun on that one yet, but uh, we're doing very, very well somewhere that we didn't expect to do well in. And, you know, it takes up your time, so it keeps you busy. And, and we had this conversation about starting this podcast almost at the beginning of the lockdown of COVID to keep us busy. But we've kept it going. Uh, we're still at work. We're still doing different things. But I'm bored at home. My wife is bored out of her mind. She's got severe COVID fatigue because she has to work from home. And a lot of the people that work from home are feeling the same thing. They don't get to go out. They don't get to go and see people. They don't get to do uh, very much. And rightfully so. We have to stop the spread of this. But, you know, we want all, we all want this to end. We all want it to end just because we want to do certain things. So uh, Master Impressive is shining a flashlight up into the ceiling right now. Uh, I think he's got a little bit of COVID fatigue. I'm looking at the moldy ceiling tiles. (laughs) I'm seeing if there's any big rats that are waiting to ambush us from the pipes up in the ceiling. (laughs) For those that don't know, we have like missing ceiling tiles in our in our uh, ceiling in our room right now. Uh, They haven't been replaced. They were full of mold. They got taken out, not replaced. So we're just checking up up top right now. Sorry, we went off there. So I know a lot of you have COVID fatigue out there. Uh, How have you dealt with the, the COVID fatigue? Let's see. Has anything changed on my end? Not really, other than I can't really get to see my grandmother in the long-term care residence, which bothers me. And right now, you have to basically go get bloody tested like every couple of days. And they don't, they have these special protocols to go visit your grandparents, your loved ones. And yet, it's just a complete shit show on the other end, the back end. And just remember this. Throughout this whole entire COVID insanity, Justin Trudeau was lighting flights in from China. All these infected countries coming in. Give me a break. People weren't even getting tested at the airports coming in off these damn flights. And then they're telling us, oh, you have to stay home. You got to lock down, bury your head in the sand. Uh, It's the end of the world. Well, really? So you elites aren't wearing the masks and you're laughing and pointing at us. You're letting all these infected flights into the country. You could have shut everything down immediately for two weeks to help reduce the spread because you can't stop this stuff. That's just the sad reality of it. But the thing is, they didn't do that. It's just a complete joke. The thing is, just looking at what's going on, it's insane. Okay, That's basically what it is. And if people can't see it for what it is, it's a virus that was released on purpose by accident. But let's say if it was by accident, it was released into the greater population, the world population on purpose. Okay, It's out there. Everyone's getting screwed by it. And again, at the end of the day, the people in the background, the power brokers, the evil, evil bastards who are running the show of this corrupt, miserable, failed world, they're using this to their advantage to enslave the world's population, basically. 
and take away the power of the working class. There was a video from some fools in the government saying, imagine a world where you don't own anything, where nothing belongs to you. And everything comes from the government, like this great new world order reset utopia. I'm sorry, people. That's called enslavement, communism, fascism, tyrannical government. You do what we say, when we say, how we say. Otherwise, you don't get your food allotment for the month. You know, look at Venezuela, look at Cuba, look at communist China. These are all dictatorships. So imagine that worldwide. That's what this is. People have different opinions on that as to why it is, how it's going to play out. But if you can see, all you have to do is look into the weeds of what's going on. And people are, they've gone insane. Well, you can't have Thanksgiving anymore. You can't have Christmas anymore. You know what? If you elites don't have to wear your masks and if you're laughing at us, you know what? Good luck because, like I said before, if the elites want a war, let's go. Let's get it on. Let's get this over with. You know, I don't want suffering for anybody, but better to die on your feet than live on your knees. That's for damn sure. And Master and President ain't going out like that, man. Master and President's going to fight and watch out. That's how I see things. Otherwise, people will just say nothing, roll over. And they'll just be assimilated into this new world order type thinking where you're just a slave. You have no rights. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? Let's say you don't subscribe to the new world order government's set of conditions on how to live. Then you subscribe to pod jerky. Well, that's first and <laughs> foremost. But let's imagine this. Let's say you don't have your special papers or your chip or whatever the hell people are talking about these days. You don't get to travel like in China. You don't get to buy food. Your credit rating is destroyed, like in China. China is a shithole. The thing that they're putting their poor people through, if you don't subscribe to the Communist Party's whims, you can't live. You can't travel. You can't go anywhere. You can't escape. You can't buy anything. They're destroying the Christians, the Uyghurs over there. They've gone full batshit crazy over there. And this is what... A lot of the people say they admire. Remember, Justin Trudeau said he admires the Communist Party of China and how they do things. That's what the Prime Minister of Canada said. He said he admires the Chinese Communist Party because they just get things done. Really? Justin Trudeau? So all those hundreds of thousands, maybe over a million people getting slaughtered in these concentration camps, organ harvesting destruction of minorities, the destruction of the Christians, tearing down all their churches, putting people in prison, people disappearing. Really, Justin Trudeau? That's what you admire? Get the fuck out, Justin Trudeau. That's what I say. And a lot of people like me think the same way. And you know what? Like I said, if you guys want to get it on, let's go. Master Impressive's ready. But he's got a great head of hair. Oh, yeah. And yeah. he knows how to organize his sock drawer, too. Yeah. Give me a fucking break. Please. But let's go back to something that you touched on earlier. Uh, and saying that with the whole COVID fatigue, the thing that bothers you a lot is not being able to go and see your grandparents. And myself, I I'm very close with my grandma and my grandpa. They're in a long-term care facility. We haven't been able to see them since February, basically, uh, is the last time we got to go and see them. And it, it really bothers me as well because I used to talk to my grandparents at least once a week um, on the phone and they've gotten to an age where they can't really hear the phone ringing anymore. So I try and call and I don't get to speak to them anymore because they don't hear the phone. It just rings and rings and rings and rings. Uh, they don't answer it. Um, they're in wheelchairs now, uh, which is upsetting. And I, I said this to my mother the other day, I feel really bad about saying this, but the reality is, is that they may pass without us being able to see them and they won't know why we weren't able to see them. I don't think that they understand what's going on. I don't think that they understand that there's a pandemic. They're upset that nobody comes to see them anymore. And I realize this happens with a lot of people. Uh, you saw the stories on the news um, back when this all started about loved ones trying to get in to see their elderly family members in long-term care facilities and they weren't allowed to just because the spread was going so rampant i guess at that time and people were losing loved ones in the care long-term care facilities and they didn't get to see them before they passed and we're experiencing the same thing right now 
where this could happen. It is a possibility if it happened. Our grandparents are older in age right now. They're up there. Uh, I believe yours is 98, mine are 96 and 91. So their age is up there. And, and it's not to say that they haven't lived a long, good life. It's just with this whole pandemic and with things being shut down and the rules and regulations that have been put in, we have to protect them from catching it because they're more compromised, I guess, at that age. And it hurts to not be able to go and see them. And that's part of the COVID fatigue as well, not being able to see family members. This year, we are not going to be able to go and see our families for Christmas unless a miracle happens. Because, you know, both of my parents, both of my wife's parents are a little bit older, but they've also gone through some health challenges in their life. And we don't want to be the ones, especially me working in the school board, seeing that we could have anything happen here. I don't want to bring that home and be responsible for passing that on to our family members and potentially hospitalizing them or even worse. So there's another part of the COVID fatigue kicking in is that you don't get to see your family members. You know, we used to go over to my brother's house and we used to go and see our nephews once or twice a month, at least on the weekends when we weren't working. And we can't even do that now. And in the summertime, it was okay because they, you know, they have a pretty big property. We can go outside and we could see the kids from a distance and, and still chat. But now we're getting into the winter months in Canada and the winter months here crazy, ridiculously cold. It's just uh, nobody wants to stand outside. So we won't be doing that in an outdoor setting. And again, we're not really allowed to get together with the restrictions that are put on. We could if we really wanted to, but we're trying to be smart about it and trying to be safe and trying to stop this spread and don't want to be part of the people that are spreading it. So that's a big part of the COVID fatigue is not being able to see family, not being able to go out and do what you want. And it feels like those are the freedoms that have been taken away from you. And I don't know. I don't know if this is a bigger test for something else down the line, five, 10 years from now, who knows? Is this a bigger test to see how much they can control the population right now so that when they do come up to this bigger test, they know exactly what they're going to be dealing with. How long can we keep people doing what we want them to do so that down the road, they have an exact timeline. Is this just a test? And again, no disrespect to anybody. I'm not saying the virus is a hoax, but is this just a test to see if they can control the population for a certain amount of time? Well, you've all heard what Master Impressive has to say about that. The idiot actors, the power brokers, the evil sons of bitches in the back, they're using this as the great crowbar to pry open the door of democracy. And it's funny how there's an attack right now just in general against the United States, Australia, and India from the Communist Party of China. So basically, the U.S. is the last democratic bastion left in the world. Let's be honest. If that falls, if the New World Order takes over the United States completely, thoroughly, who's left to stand up to China? Nobody. And so this one world government then will be fully in place and no one's going to be able to stop them. The vaccine, I don't even want to talk about that right now. There's not enough data on that right now to make me want to get it. Uh, we'll see what some of the doctors say. We'll see what some of the leaders say and uh, we'll go from there. But I guess we're going to wrap this episode up here. Uh, I know we went on a little bit of a rant but that's what pod jerky does sometimes. Sometimes we just shoot from the hip and we give you a little bit of rant. We have some fun episodes. We have some serious episodes. So this is one of the more serious episodes and some of the stuff that we think about and some of the stuff that's going on in our province uh, compared to around the world. Again, we don't live in the States. We don't live in other countries. We don't know what your policies are really, what you guys are going through. Uh, you see in a lot of the news, some of the stuff that they're going through, but I don't know even know who to believe on the news anymore. They report stories this way. They report stories that way. So again, it's the news. Who knows who to believe? You guys know what's going on in your uh, cities and, and uh, states and countries and provinces and all that. We're just giving you our point of view from our province, our city, uh, what's happening here, what we're going through, the fatigue that we're going through. 
And I think that's pretty much going to do it for this episode. We'll probably have another follow-up episode on this after the Christmas holidays, just to see where we're at to compare to where we are right now. Uh, hopefully we're in better times. Hopefully we're in happier times. Hopefully we're not in lockdown and we're able to see family members again. We're able to see our friends again. We're able to reopen everything, have the economy going strong and uh, everybody gets to be happy. So that's going to do it for this episode. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Master Impressive has one more thing to say. If they try to cancel Christmas, I'm going to bust out my big ass candy cane and I'm going to start swinging. Watch out. Don't touch Christmas. Do not touch Christmas. That's it. Master Impressive. Out. Don't forget to subscribe to Pod Jerky on Apple, on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, on Amazon Music. That's right. We're on Amazon Music, on Audible. Hit us up on Twitter and Instagram at Pod Jerky. You can find us on Facebook as well. Pod Jerky page, discussion page as well. Uh, hit us up on our social media. Subscribe, tune in, make sure you get the latest content. We have some really, really good episodes coming up. I am Director Awesome. Master Impressive. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and we'll see you later. Here we go now!